Exactly 60 years ago today, a Congolese national liberation leader, Patrice Lumumba, was assassinated. Lumumba was the Congo's first democratically elected leader following the country's independence from Belgium in 1960. And yesterday, the Democratic Republic of the Congo also remembered its former president, Lohan Kabila, who was assassinated 20 years ago. Now, to reflect on these events, we joined via Zoom by Africa analyst and Congolese native Jean Boisa. Mr. Boisa, a very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back to the Globe. Uh, good evening, Simpiwe, and thank you for having us uh, on your platform, the Globe, and mainly to speak about uh, a giant. And it is a great privilege to be speaking uh, about Patrice Emery Lumumba as well as Laurent Desiré Kabila. Thank you. Indeed, it's an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Now, 60 years on after his death, is this the DRC that Patrice Lumumba had dreamed of and uh, fought so hard for? And if not, uh, I mean, uh, where, at which point did that particular dream diminish? Can the country now go back to that point and rectify uh, where it floundered? Well, certainly uh, the country can go back to the dream of Patrice Emery Lumumba, but it is uh, very important that we recap a little bit of history. And I would like to touch base on the fact that uh, in the history of many nations, I would say if we were to speak about uh, the United States, the 39 founding father or Mande uh, Mandela here, Mao Zedong or De Gaulle in France, if at some point they were to assassinate those leaders, I don't think that the history of those countries would have been the same. So to touch base on what uh, Lumumba stand for, he stood for an anti-imperialist, an anti-colonialist, an anti-capitalist, and that's the reason for which he was sacrificed and died. And if I may uh, recall one of his quotes, he says, if I have sacrificed everything, my situation, my family, my hobbies, it is to serve my people. And at this point of time, at this crossroads, it is very important that us as Africans, we remember and rise up and defend the cause and the legacy he left for us. That is the sovereignty of our land, the sovereignty of our people, the intangibility of our borders, which is not the case at the moment. So I think it is appropriate that we have a conference on the Congo for the Congolese to have a better Congo for all, not only the Congolese, the continent, as well as the world. Now, Lumumba's assassination has been dubbed the most important assassination of the 20th century. I mean, why is this of great historical importance? Does it have to do with the global context uh, in which it, uh, it took place? And bearing in mind uh, the fact that uh, this crime was a culmination of two plots by the American and the Belgian governments. Well, we would not just say two plots, uh, because there are so many uh, nations uh, uh, and individuals that were involved in the plot. We could name also the CIA. Uh, we, no, we must not forget the role that the secret agency played uh, for the assassination of Patrice and Marie Lumumba. But uh, it was that important, and it came in the time of uh, what is being called the Cold War, of which uh, I would always contest because it was not that cold that war, because in Angola, people were dying. In Mozambique, people were dying. Here in South Africa, people were dying. And the Congo as well, people died. So we must not put it into the terms of uh, the Cold War, but instead, the entire globe wanted, and until today, they want a piece of Congo for the minerals, strategic minerals that are there, along with the fertile soil. So this is the role that Patrice Emery Lumumba was killed for because he defended the sovereignty as well as what Congo stands for globally. Was the United States and its Western allies interest in, uh, in the Congolese raw materials or the strategic raw material, uh, materials led to Patrice Lumumba's death? Yeah, it led to Patrice Lumumba's death as well as Laurent Desiré Kabila 
uh, who was assassinated in 2001. So exactly almost the same date, the 16th of June, Laurent Désiré Kabila was killed, and the 17th, uh, 60 years ago, uh, Patrice Emery Lumumba was killed because he was defending the independence of the Congolese people. And this is very important for us Congolese today to remember that we need also to defend what belongs to us, our lands, what it counts for, the minerals, the soil, the river, and so on and so forth, and mainly the people. And uh, to the women and mothers, so did, uh, this is a man who respected the family. Remember, he had already crossed and escaped, but he returned when he saw that there was gender-based violence onto his wife and the children, and that's how Mobutu, who was a spy for imperialists, the CIA, the Belgians, had to catch him and landed him to his gruesome death. So to what extent was the ideals of national unity and uh, pan-Africanism or pan-African solidarity uh, you know, violated or eroded as a result of Lumumba's death? Oh, for sure, because uh, remember that uh, his advocacy was uh, basically, he had no distinction among uh, Congolese, uh, and he wanted the unity of the Congolese and the quest for African unity and brotherhood. He also advocated for good management of resources, and people were the first beneficiary with regard to the resources of the Congo. He sacrifices everything during his death. But that shows that how this man, his stature was so important to the memory of Africans. And it baffles me. It is really questionable that until today, there are no lecture series about Patrice Emery Lumumba. There are nothing uh, that has been, there's nothing that has been done to elevate this iconic uh, leader to uh, the pantheon of the African Union as the, a true liberator of the African uh, children. So for me, it is about time that as the globe is doing it now, that we create uh, uh, a dialogue about Congo so that Patrice Emery Lumumba will uh, be uh, honored. And uh, yesterday, uh, the DRC also commemorated exactly 20 years um, after the assassination of uh, that country's uh, former leader, Lor Lauren Kabila. Uh, so in as much as we speak of conspiracies uh, involving the Americans and the Belgian in the murder or assassination of Patrice Lumumba, can the, sen uh, can the same be said about the assassination of uh, Kabila? Well, uh, if I were to tap again on the history, we must remember that... Uh uh, Laurent Désiré Kabila worked uh, in the 1960s uh, for Patrice Emery Lumumba, and first he had uh, his ideas of that we call the Lumumbism, and he defended those ideas of the sovereignty of uh, the soil. But as we understand uh, the globalization that came up with the perestroika and glasnost uh, in the 19 at the end of 1980s and uh, beginning of 1990s, uh, we remember that in the eastern side of the Congo, we had Rwanda, Uganda, uh, where we had Museveni. Uh, sadly, they had elections uh, recently and still uh, in term with the sixth term. And we had uh, Kagame who came on board. And as far as they created the rebel what they called the rebellion, and the rebellion was a mixture of those foreign armies, which Lumumba himself was condemning and saying that it is the internal forces as well as the external forces who defeated him. So Laurent Désiré Kabila was a victim himself of the external as well as the internal forces that led to his assassination. And again, it is a gruesome assassination. The, the difference, with the parallelism between uh, Lumumba and uh, Laurent Désiré Kabila is the simple fact that until today we would never recover the body of Patrice Emery Lumumba. But it is not important. What is important that his fire is still burning within our soul, mind, and CK 
to make him rise so that his uh, Congo will still be the great Congo that he dreamt for, along with uh, Laurent Desiree Kabila. And the fact that the country released uh, the man convicted of uh, playing a role uh, in his assassination, would that perhaps help in national unity and reconciliation? Well, uh, Eddie Kapen has been released, but there's so much to say. There are so many layers in that history that uh, we can to uh, we can question why has he been released at this point of time? What are they trying to do? And this is uh, also a question that uh, I, I was uh, so I asked myself some times ago. This man was not the one who killed uh, Pat uh, Emery, Laurent Desiree Kabila, but instead he killed the guy who supposedly killed uh, Emery, uh, Laurent Desiree Kabila. So what did he know exactly? And we know that there are so many external forces that were involved. How much does he know about it? Will there be a judicial uh, case about this uh, uh, Emery... Uh, Laurent Desiree Kabila. You know, I love Patrice Emery Lumumba, so his name comes often in my mouth. Uh, no, no wonder that uh, Laurent Desiree Kabila was his uh, follower and uh, his uh, secretary at that time. So I think that uh, restoration, justice is very important to restitute, re uh, bring reparation as well as restoration of the Congolese dignity and decency uh, for uh, the years to come so that you can yield to development in the Congo. And uh, Kabila was branded as a dictator who was worse than Mobutu Sese Seko, despite the fact that uh, when he took up office, he was hailed as a panacea or as the messiah for the Congolese people. Where and how did he lose his way? Well, uh, who actually is calling him a dictator, that's the problem, and we always have to ask those questions uh, that might be uh, their own narrative. But as Congolese who lived during the era of, uh, um, the era of uh, Laurent Desiree Kabila, as a teacher, uh, we remember that we had no salaries uh, during Mobutu Sese Seko, and when Kabila came, he actually uh, paid the salary to, to the civil servants. And also we can understand that at that time, Laurent Desiree Kabila never left any debt to the uh, IEMF or any other financial institution. And that might be also one of the reasons for which uh, Laurent, uh, Laurent Desiree Kabila was killed. So he was not a dictator. He had been imposed a war because they wanted the minerals that are so many in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and they want to take them for free or engage violent and conflict in the East as well as in the West so that they can plunder those minerals without paying the right price for it. Well, but the forces opposed to Kabila say that the, you know, the conflict, uh, well, they view the conflict as an internal uprising inspired by Kabila's betrayal of the very values that uh, led to the overthrow of Mobutu Sese Seko. Well, there could not be an internal uprising uh, that's led to Laurent Desiree Kabila assassination. And I will tap on to history. I was not tempted to speak about history, but uh, we all remember Emperor Kaiser Etuko Kwefilimi. So who killed Patri uh, Laurent Desiree Kabila? The son, the so-called son, succeeded uh, his father. But we remember that it is just a Trojan horse who was put there so that they could plunder. And when they didn't need him again, they also asked him to leave power. So Africa needs to rise up. Africa needs to understand that uh, as Africans, uh, and many of these other people that are humanists and humanitarian, we need to rewrite history and bring the history of the true African people, the Chris Olympio, the Sekou Touré, uh, the uh, Thomas Sankara, to live for the independence, autonomy, and the development of Africa and any other 
country that is suffering the plight of violence and conflict that does not help us as Africans. Now, the DRC is now gearing to take over the chair of the African Union. Is the country equal to the task? I doubt about it because uh, we, we must remember that in the eastern side of the Congo, we still have uh, violence. Uh, lately, we had uh, 22 people were killed uh, in one of the village there. We still have uh, the MONUSCO, which is uh, a foreign uh, international force that is there, but still there's no peace. Uh, I would have assumed that within the two years that he has been at the helm of the country, he would have brought peace in the eastern side, but he hasn't done so. Uh, civil servants are still not being paid, and there are so many, so many challenges in the Congo. Uh, until today, we don't even know uh, if we are Congolese, because we don't have uh, uh, a proper identification and the uh, passports that we had um, as an identification, uh, they say that uh, they can produce them in the Congo, but we in the diaspora, we don't have. So we are prisoners in our own land, and we are prisoners outside, and there are those that were displaced from the various conflicts during Kabila, Joseph Kabila term that are still internally suffering of malnutrition and various ailments in the Congo. So for me, it's not up to the task to take the African Union. African Union, it is something that we also need to rebrand and bring, uh, for instance, the grassroots, the civil society, and uh, Pan-Africanist on board so that it, is, it has a new look that will look forward to the development of all Africans in their continent. Well, Mr. Boasa, great chatting to you. And uh, ironically, as uh, the DRC is poised to take over the AU chair, I mean, it, uh, it found itself in the common position uh, to deal with the conflict in Libya, the insurgency in the Sahel, and as well as uh, uh, calling for renewed democracy in Mali. But uh, it's got its own uh, internal problems at home. So we're yet to see uh, how that will fare. Thank you so much for your analysis. We do appreciate your time. It's a pleasure, Simpiwe. Thanks for having me in the memory of Lumumba. Thank you.